The Legend of Zelda series is full of many unique and interesting characters, many of whom have become beloved characters such as Midna, Groos, Soraya, and more recently the champions in Breath of the Wild. But truthfully, the deepest and most complex character isn't any of those that you may think of at first. The man I'm talking about is Ganondorf, the power-hungry Gerudo turned monster. In fact, Ganondorf is an incredibly unique character. While other characters in Zelda are confined to a single game or are reincarnations like Zelda and Link, with the exception of Four Swords Adventures which features a new Ganondorf, Ganondorf, or Ganon, is the same person, the same being, the same entity throughout the entire series. The timeline details the story of Ganondorf from his origin all the way to his finale as Calamity Ganon. And not only that, but details how his life and fate were affected by the multiple timelines. Let's take a step back and look at Ganondorf's origins and go from there. Long before Hyrule was even a kingdom, there was Demise, a primal, demonic entity, which in some ways could be described as Hyrule's version of Satan or the Devil. Demise is an eloquent, almost honorable figure despite this, who only has one drive in his life, and that's his absolute hatred and malice for the goddesses, and for the goddess Hylia as well. The reasons behind where Demise came from, or where he gained his hatred for the gods, is unclear as of now, and may potentially be explored in the future. Point is, he's bad news. And Link, the first Link in Skyward Sword, forges the Master Sword and takes him down, but not without consequence. Demise places a curse on Zelda and Link, stating that a personification of his hatred would follow them for all eternity. This guy was so pissed off that he just wanted to screw with their entire bloodline and souls forever. Just to make it clear, Demise and Ganondorf are not the same entity. This is often a confusing subject for some people, but it's worth noting that Ganondorf is merely an incarnation of Demise's hatred, his raw emotion, his malice. In some ways, you could say that Ganondorf is more like a son to Demise, if that makes sense. Some hundreds of years later, potentially thousands, Ganondorf is born to the Gerudo. This is the first time that Ganondorf, or Ganon, stepped foot in the land of Hyrule. Later in the series in Wind Waker, Ganondorf claims that he saw the Triforce to the jealousy of the kingdom of Hyrule. Being born in this harsh, unforgiving desert, it kind of makes sense. I would say that this pursuit of power, however, is what corrupted him. He may at one point intended to use the Triforce for what he believed were noble purposes, but by the seven year time skip in Ocarina of Time, he is completely drunk with power. In some ways, you could say that this version of Ganondorf is very immature, almost childish. He talks about himself like somebody who doesn't really fully comprehend the power he wields. Because of the events that take place in Ocarina of Time, it's at this point that the timeline is split into three unique, alternate realities in which Ganondorf takes very different paths. In one, Ganondorf is sealed away in the Sacred Realm along with the Triforce of Power. In another, Ganondorf's plans are stopped before he even has a chance to touch the Triforce, but by divine intervention is given the Triforce of Power at the time of his execution, before being banished to the Twilight Realm. And in the final timeline, Ganondorf successfully defeats Link and takes the entire Triforce for his own before the sages seal him away to the Sacred Realm, which is now under his full control due to having the entire Triforce and becomes the Dark World. First, let's talk about that final timeline, the Failure Timeline. Due to the immense power of the Triforce, Ganondorf becomes completely corrupted by its immense power, becoming more beast-like and forgetting who he even was. This was the emergence of Ganon, the blue pig-like monster that haunted Link and Zelda throughout the entire failure timeline. Truly, this version of Ganondorf is everything Demise wanted him to become. He completely succumbs to his power-hungry nature and evolves into a monster whose only purpose is to seek the Triforce. Continuously revived and resurrected, this version of Ganon stalks Link all the way till the end, 
when Link from the original Zelda finally vanquishes him. Elsewhere, on another timeline, we find a Ganondorf whose plans were stopped before he even had a chance to put them into action. This Ganondorf is the Ganondorf who was denied his victory and was banished away to the Twilight Realm. Because of this, he became vengeful, angry, willing to do anything to get out and take his rightful place as the ruler of Hyrule. This transformed him into, into the ball of fire we later see him as. I believe that could be a representation of his, his anger and how vengeful he's become. Although very close to the other Ganon, this version of Ganondorf managed to keep his sanity due to not finding the entire Triforce and is then put to rest by Link, cursing him as he died in Hyrule Field. Very similar to when Demise was taken out by the first Link. And finally, the adult timeline. In some ways, you could say this is the original timeline, before Zelda used the Ocarina of Time to split the timeline. Here, Ganondorf rules Hyrule for seven long years before finally being taken out by the Hero of Time and is then sealed away in the Sacred Realm. The Hero of Time is then sent away to another timeline in the hopes that he could live out his childhood. Ganondorf then manages to break free from his prison and ravages Hyrule. With no Hero of Time, the people of Hyrule have no choice but to pray to the gods, who respond by flooding Hyrule absolutely sealing Ganondorf beneath the ocean. By the time that Ganondorf is able to free himself from his watery prison in the Wind Waker, we find a version of Ganondorf that looks quite different from other versions, looking much older and fatter. When the Hero of Winds confronts Ganondorf, he has a demeanor very different from his Ocarina of Time self. He is less arrogant and seems to humor the Hero of Winds more than anything until the climactic final battle where he gains the entire Triforce and has his wish denied by the King of Hyrule. Due to this, Ganondorf loses his mind completely before trying to kill the Hero of Winds and Zelda in a blind rage. But wait, is that really what happened? Did this version of Ganondorf, who seemed wiser, who seemed to understand his mistakes, who outright says to the children he doesn't want to kill them, did he really do a 180 and just go mad like all the other Ganondorfs? Something I've always thought interesting about this finale is how in order to get the Triforce, Ganondorf effortlessly disarms and defeats both Link and Zelda before stealing their Triforce pieces, and during the final confrontation goes out of his way to sheath his weapon before knocking out Zelda. This is not a bloodthirsty and rage Ganon. In fact, I would say this man, who had thousands of years to contemplate his actions under the sea, has, by the end, accepted his fate. He let the kids win. He let Link be the hero. His final words are, the wind is blowing. Both he and the king recognize their time is gone, and life moves forward beyond the old kingdom of Hyrule. For a while, Ganondorf humored the idea of bringing back Hyrule, that's why he wanted the Triforce. But at this point, he's realized his time is gone. A tragic end to the only version of Ganondorf who could be redeemed. Perhaps he had even broken away from the Curse of Demise. It's interesting to note that this is the only version of Ganondorf who at no point actually transforms into the pig-like creature, instead using a puppet version. Could Puppet Ganon actually be an analogy for how Ganon is merely a puppet to be used by Demise, while the Ganondorf in this timeline had become his own puppet master? Regardless of any of this though, in Breath of the Wild, we find a Ganondorf and a Hyrule many, many thousands, tens of thousands of years after all of these timelines, so far that you can't even put it in a place on any of the timelines. And at this point, Ganon has completely devolved in even further than the Beast Pig Ganon. He's just like a shell of his former self. Zelda says in the final confrontation that at this point Ganon has even given up on regenerating. He's done. He's given up. He doesn't want to do this anymore. He's basically just become... 
he's given up all of his like mortal coils and become nothing more than Demise's hatred, the pure form of Demise's hatred, before Link finally puts an end to him for good. To me, this is the end of Ganon. I certainly hope that in the future they don't necessarily make games after this where Ganon comes back. Certainly they could put games in between with Ganon, but to me this is the definitive end of Ganon. So when you look at all the games and you look at it as the series, and you look at it from game to game, and how Ganondorf progressed through his journey as a young uh, Gerudo king to this calamity, a, a force of nature, really. It starts to paint a really interesting picture about how things change a person, how the alternate events that happened throughout the Zelda timeline changed Ganondorf and how he ended up the way he did. Anyways, Personally for me, Ganondorf has always been an interesting character and I've kind of been wanting to make this video for a very long time, really exploring the, uh, the depths of Ganondorf's character. But I was waiting for Breath of the Wild to come out because I really wanted to play it and experience it and what they do with Ganon and then kind of mull it over for a while. And now I'm pretty confident enough to make this video. So let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I feel like this is a interesting and unique perspective on the life of Ganon and Ganondorf that uh, not a lot of people necessarily think about. Many people think of Ganon as uh, a particular villain in one game and not as an antagonist that has been antagonizing Link throughout the entire series. And in most cases is the same person. But yeah, so... Thanks a lot, you guys, for listening. Uh, it's a little bit long video, uh, but I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. So just let me know what you think in the comments, all right? See you next time.